This is an extra video I made to demonstrate how easy it is to create a new type of destruction scene just by modifying the guiding geometry. We're gonna go from a banana splitting destruction scene to a flower splitting effect. I'm gonna show you how to get from this to this by making just a few simple changes. In this video, the project file continues from a previous video so we don't have to start all over and just get into the more interesting features right away. If you want to know how I created the banana splitting effect on the left, please check out one of the previous videos. The video order goes from top to bottom for chronological order. What we can do to this destruction simulation just by modifying the guiding geometry and we're not going to change anything else. First of all, I'm going to make these nodes black because um, they were there just for reference, uh, just for demonstration purposes. So I'm going to leave them in this uh, hip file just for reference. I'm going to be disconnecting this shader ball because I'm done with the collision geometry example. So I'm just going to disconnect that. But I'm going to leave the nodes here. So if you wanted to play around with it and connect it, you it's still there. Now, the first thing I want to do, this is our original uh, geometry before I moved it halfway over on the grid and before I made it a little bigger. So as you can see, this, uh, this bigger geometry here, it is twice the size of our guiding geometry or when I branched off, uh, when I started to branch off the whole geometry, this is like the initial geometry shape and then I started to branch it off into two different versions. One was this one is a bigger geometry which is twice the size of this one. I'm gonna start to branch off over here even earlier. I'm gonna add a null node just for reference. So what I'm gonna do is move this. So I'm gonna move this to the one quadrant of the grid. So instead of moving it to half of the grid, I'm going to move it to a quadrant. So let's do this. Add a transform node here. And it's going to be 0.5 here. I'm going to template this as well so you can see. Uh, maybe make the background darker here. Now this is halfway and then halfway again. So now we're in one quadrant of the grid. If I take a look at the top view, this is a quadrant. Let's take a look what it looks in the main geometry. This is the main to be factor, fractured geometry. It is exactly a quarter of it. I'm going to have to move some of these around. Now, I can actually reuse a lot of these nodes because the only change I'm going to make is onto the shape. I'm just going to be changing the shape of our guiding geometry. This is going to crisscross a little bit. We can reuse this boolean. So I'm just going to copy this boolean over. Connect this to our new geometry now. Because this boolean, these two booleans have the same, are using the same slicers or cutters, these cutters. So this is the result that we get. It's nothing fancy. It's just a lot of cuts in it, so we can have a lot, a lot of influence points that we can apply to the RBD simulation. Now let's zoom in. I'm gonna uh, use a diff, like a new bend, because the this older bend, this older bend over here is bending, is bending differently. It's bending, it's adjusted to bend for this geometry, for our old geometry. So let me connect it here. Select the bend. Now our bend is over here which is completely not what we want. I need this pointing upwards for starters. So this capture direction, I need it to point up. Now that's the Y axis. So one on the Y axis and zero here, that will point, that will make this capture region point exactly up. Now this capture region is quite short as well. It ends right here. So I want it twice as long. Okay, so it gets all, it, it, gets it all the way there, all the way to the top. Now, I want to move this capture region to this corner over here. So it's it's just halfway over here and then, oh sorry, one, one unit up and one unit to the side. And that'll get us right to this corner. Now this is still not bending in the correct direction I want because look at this, 
this is bending this these um on the y-axis and that's not what i want i want it i want this to bend outwards we can actually twist the angle so we can go like this or not that one So I needed to change this to the x-axis. So it needs to be perpendicular to the x. That way we can twist this like this. If it's perpendicular to the y, and I start changing this value, nothing happens. If I go to the x-axis, then it starts to rotate. So you have to play around with this up vector axis. I'm going to have this go to, I think, negative 50, maybe. Okay, that looks okay. So I'm going to show you what it looks like when it's bending. So it's bending like this. So I'm going to throw down a copy and transform. Now we want four of them. So I'm going to have four copies, and I want them to, to be in every single corner. So I'm going to rotate this 90 degrees. Okay. Now let's go back to the bend, and let's just bend it. So that's what I want. Now let's create an animation on the bend. So come over here, come over to the bend, and create keyframe. As I mentioned before, to create a keyframe for the bend parameter, hold down Alt on your keyboard and left click your mouse onto this bend parameter. This turns green and look in the timeline, you have locked this bend value to frame one. Now let's move it over, scrub in the timeline and go to 48. So this is two seconds, 24 frames per second. Bend this over like this. And then I'm going to create another keyframe, hold down Alt on your keyboard, left click bend, and it creates another keyframe on the timeline. Now I'm going to connect our, connect this and replace it to the guide geometry on the fifth input of the RBD bullet solver. Okay, I'm going to rewind the timeline and I'm going to play this. Let me pick a better angle. Okay, now it's starting to shake because our guiding geometry just freezes at the top there. So it looks pretty good from here on, but it freezes right here. Now that's not normal. So what we can do to improve this, select the RBD bullet solver, come over to guided simulation, simulation settings. Now there's a blend parameter. What this will do is that it tells Houdini how much do we want this guiding geometry to be considered when I'm doing my calculations. It's sort of like a bias. So how much do you want me to prioritize the guiding geometry? And how much do you want me to prioritize the other uh, uh, forces that I have hooked up, like gravity? If I go like zero, and then I'm going to rewind the timeline, I'm just going to play it nothing happens well it, it's starting to break apart due to the gravity gravity but the guiding geometry is not being enforced as much you can see that it's still playing a factor in the simulation because some of the pieces are still highlighted in blue but it's no longer doing that flower effect anymore so we can use this blend uh parameter now let me turn it back to one let me uh reset the timeline turn this blend back to one let's replay it so we can cook a few frames. Okay, say I'm trying to go for a, a very strange, a very specific simulation. So I want all the pieces to, to follow the animation exactly to until it reaches this point. And it, I want it to s slowly fade away as we get closer to the 48th frame mark maybe 35 okay i'll give it like 13 frames to start to fade away so let's we can actually keyframe this as well so i want full control up until frame one to frame 35 i want full control the guiding simulation to have full control 
So let's keyframe this. Keyboard hold alt, left click mouse on the blend. So this creates a keyframe here. And if you look over to the timeline, it's green as well. Now on frame 48, so let's scrub there. So I'm going to put zero. Keyboard hold alt, uh, left click mouse on the blend, and it creates another keyframe. So let's see what this looks like. So this looks a lot better than it was before. I'm just going to double check if there's any shaking effect. So that looks pretty good. So that's how you can use this blend parameter in the RBD solver to gradually hand over the guiding geometry over to the rest of the solver. Another way to control the guiding geometry besides using distance to strength. Distance to strength gives us different strengths for every single pieces, and the blend can sort of blend it overall for the entire guided simulation. It's, it comes to that point, that natural look that you're trying to get. I created an animation calculator to help you figure out where to put your keyframes for your animation. So here, I have an example here with a, a sphere that I'm going to animate going up. So I want the upward movement to last about a third of a second. Now, where would I put it? Uh, where would I put the keyframes on this timeline? Well, the first keyframe is easy. That's just uh, at frame zero at the starting position. Hold alt on the keyboard and left click translate. So this is my initial position. This is my first frame. But where do I put the second frame? If I want the bounce or not the bounce, the upward movement to last about a third of a second. That's where this animation calculator comes in. Come over to bubble pins. Now, if you scroll down, it'll be right here because the, I just uploaded it. Uh, I posted it yesterday. So it's still in the more recent, the recently posted listing, but over time it's going to go away. So I added uh, a search box here so you can search for it. animation calculator. So this will come up and it'll bring you right here. Or you can just go to the blog and you can search for it down here. Right now it's it goes it will display the more recent ones at the top so since this is pretty new it, it's it'll be at the top over time it'll be moved down so come over here and there's a uh, animation calculator here now what we want to do is calculate the number of frames right now because i don't know where to put my second keyframe in houdini i want the animation to last a third of a second so 0 0.33 or 0, 0 0.3 and the frames per second i am using 24 frames per second right now which is the standard for hd so i'm going to put 24 here and then hit calculate and i'll go like 7.1999 frames now i might improve this a little bit later down the road um, if you scroll down you also get the results here as well so I might give it like a rounding maybe in the future and improve it slightly. You should be good with the next keyframe. You can choose to create the next keyframe at seven frames or eight frames. So you can round down or round up. The offset of one frame shouldn't affect your animation too much. So let's go here. Let's go to seven and let's come over here. Hold alt left click translate to create the second keyframe. Oh, wait, sorry. Let's move it up first. So I'm going to move it up by four for units. So alt left click. Okay. So here we have our animation. So this, and then remember to click this real time playback. So this will play it in uh, real time. Otherwise it'll just play as fast as it can. Thank you for watching and sticking to the end.